All right, everyone. Hello and welcome into the day where we learn the Minnesota Vikings current coaching staff is being purged left and right by other teams around the league, seemingly at will. And not only are we going to be losing our former offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak, to another job, he is now the quarterback's coach for the Denver Broncos, which I don't think anybody's upset about that. If we're being completely honest with ourselves, we were ready to see him go and we expected it. But we're also going to be losing our special teams coordinator, Ryan Ficken, who will be taking the same job with another team, the Los Angeles Chargers, after one season with the Vikings. As the special teams coordinator, we've lost our offensive line coach, our quarterbacks coach. They are leaving one by one out the door over the last day and a half. And you're probably wondering, why is this happening? Why are the Vikings allowing this mass exodus of coaches to leave the building without blocking these moves. Is it a re reaction to the Kevin O'Connell hire? Is it a reaction to not hiring Jim Harbaugh? It's a little bit more simpler than that. And honestly, it's a good thing because the Vikings are doing these coaches a favor, allowing them to leave this lame duck period that we find ourselves in and explore other areas or other opportunities of employment that ha might have more job security. Because the, the thinking is that we have to wait a week, a week and a half for Kevin O'Connell to be done with his time with the Los Angeles Rams while they wait for the Super Bowl to take place. And then afterwards, he can finally come in, be introduced officially and take over and come in and decide what he's going to do with this coaching staff. So there's no guarantee that once all that happens and all that time has passed, that these current coaches are going to be retained. He might easily come in and do a clean slate and wipe everybody off the board and start fresh with an entirely new coaching staff. So... This is good that, uh, you know, the, the coaches that are currently on staff are giving the chance to seek other jobs while those jobs are still available. But before we can really dive into who's going to be on the coaching staff for Kevin O'Connell once he is officially introduced as the new head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, we should probably explore how we got here. Because yesterday in the video, I was sort of confused about uh, the entire week that led up to uh, the finalization of the process where Kevin O'Connell was named the new head coach of the Minnesota Vikings in an unofficial manner. So how did we get here? How did this all transpire? And today I want to use this article that appeared in The Athletic this morning as our point of departure. And I highly, 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 highly recommend that you go read this because it is fantastically written. It's got a great opener, gives great insight and behind the scenes detail on how this all came to be over the last week to two weeks. And I know it's behind a paywall. You have to have a subscription for this service. But honestly, uh, coming from somebody who has a bachelor's degree in journalism, it's good to pay for good sports writing. It really is. And you get more of the good stuff when we do it. So I highly recommend that if you can't afford it, um, you know, definitely subscribe to The Athletic. They, they they run deals all the time. They've got great writers and really, really good coverage. Um, And and one of the things that I, they don't really like tell you, or at least that I haven't seen it promoted all, all that much, is that you do get to interact with authors from time to time. They do uh, subscriber only mailbags, which is really fun to do. And you get to participate in that and see if they answer your questions in print as a published article, which is always awesome. So as somebody who comes from a background of journalism, who has been published in papers, who has written for a magazine, who has been a sports editor, um, paying for good journalism is a good idea. So I highly recommend that you do that. So I'm not going to give away the entire story here because I don't want to do that to something that's behind a paywall. But I do want to sort of go over my takeaways from this article by Chad Graff and John uh, Krasinski and just sort of give you my take on the whole situation. So as we all recall, the final four for the Minnesota Vikings head coaching position was Kevin O'Connell, Raheem Morris, Patrick Graham, and uh, Jim Harbaugh. Now, Jim Harbaugh and Patrick Graham didn't enter this situation or this scenario until after Quasi Adolfo Mensah was hired. And he didn't really say that he was going to expand the search, but he kind of did in a sense with those two additional names. Uh, Kevin O'Connell and Raheem Morris were originally in the coaching search before he was hired. From the reporting, it sounds like Quasi Adolfo Mensah came into his interview for the general manager position with three names in mind for the head coaching vacancy. He suggested Kevin O'Connell, Patrick Graham and Jim Harbaugh. Those were his three guys. Patrick Graham makes sense because of the Ivy League ties. Jim Harbaugh makes sense because of the 49er connection. And then Kevin O'Connell makes sense because it represents a different direction to go in for the franchise than what they had been previously doing under Mike Zimmer and the 1995 football philosophy that does not work in the modern era. Plus, it's a change from a defensive-minded coach to an offensive-minded coach. So for the second round of interviews, they started with Kevin O'Connell. Then they went with Raheem Morris. They hit those back to back when they flew into LA on Sunday. They came back on, or was it Monday? Yeah, it was actually Monday. Sorry for that. Sunday was championship uh, day for the AFC and the NFC. And then on Monday, they flew out to LA. Kevin O'Connell was interviewed. Raheem Morris was interviewed back in Minnesota on Tuesday, where they interviewed Patrick Graham for nine hours. Holy hell. And then on Wednesday was Jim Harbaugh day because they brought him in. 
and they spent about 10, maybe 11 hours with him. And from what I gather, from all the reporting that I've read, is that Kevin O'Connell was the first choice before Jim Harbaugh walked into the building. Once they had concluded the interviews with Patrick Graham, Raheem Morris, and Kevin O'Connell before Wednesday even happened, Kevin O'Connell was the front runner. He was the first choice all along. And it wasn't a job that Jim Harbaugh was going to walk in and the interview was going to be a formality like we all had thought. I think we misread the situation entirely. Um, all of the all of the flags, all of the clues pointed to it. National Signing Day. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's Jim Harbaugh. He's got, you know, the, the resume that speaks for itself, success everywhere he goes. It would be a huge splash move for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, you know, everything pointed to Jim Harbaugh being the next head coach of the Minnesota Vikings until it didn't. So the situation goes that Jim Harbaugh came into TCO Performance Center in Minnesota, uh, spent the day with the Minnesota Vikings front office and ownership, and it was his job to win the job. Uh, unbelievably, as I, I, you know, as I sit here and tell you, we kind of just assumed that it was Jim Harbaugh's job to take if he wanted it. And if he didn't, they were going to go with a consolation prize, which would have been one of the other three candidates. But as it turns out, he had to beat out Kevin O'Connell and he didn't. Uh, they decided that they were just going to go their separate ways at the end of the day on Wednesday. And the Minnesota Vikings didn't even hire or not hire, but didn't even offer uh, Jim Harbaugh a contract. They didn't even get into those discussions about money or years or uh, the job being his. They just decided to part ways. It wasn't going to work out. And Kevin O'Connell is now the man. So that reporting makes me feel a lot better about the hire because as I said in yesterday's video, that the mistake of this being uh, the process where, you know, we had all this hype of uh, Jim Harbaugh for the better part of this week was it was going to give it the perception that it looked like they were just falling back on plan B and Kevin O'Connell was a consolation prize. This makes that sound like it's not even the case. Uh, Jim Harbaugh was unable to impress uh, the front office of the Minnesota Vikings and ownership the same way that Kevin O'Connell did. Apparently, Kevin O'Connell came to his interview you know, with all of these details about the roster, had some, you know, talking points about Kirk Cousins, really blew them away. And I think that this, in the end, is the best choice for the Minnesota Vikings because they're now going to uh, employ a young offensive mind that comes from what I would argue is a successful coaching tree under Sean McVay. Now, I know in yesterday's video, I said that I don't care about that, but, you know, that's a nice thing to realize when you actually look at uh, what uh, Brandon Staley and Matt LaFleur and um, uh, I'm uh, Zach Taylor, sorry, <laughs> I'm still trying to remember everybody's name uh, from all of these different teams. But uh, when you when you look at that, you kind of feel better about yourself. Um, so uh, the the success has the success is there with everybody that's worked under Sean McVay. So there is potential. I would say that Kevin O'Connell is a riskier hire than John Harbaugh, despite all of our hesitations regarding his history in the NFL, uh, his history with every other team that he's coached for, and just how he is as a person in general. Um, because Jim Harbaugh represented a known commodity, Kevin O'Connell represents a, a wild, wildly unknown commodity. He is zero and zero. He's never coached. He's never called plays uh, officially. You know, uh, that's Sean, McJ uh, Sean McVay's job with the um, Los Angeles Rams. So it, it represents a huge unknown. But uh, from what I've read that he was he was a pretty hot commodity. Uh, Sean McVay actually blocked a, another attempt for him to go be an offensive coordinator somewhere else last year. Um, but now this year we get him. So maybe thank you, Sean McVay, for that. So that is uh, how this all unfolded. It, it sounds like that Kevin O'Connell was the front runner this entire time. And it was Jim Harbaugh's job to win uh, over his uh, his potential employers. And he was unable to do that. So uh, that is where we currently stand. Let me know what you think of this in the comments below. And if you do have the opportunity to go read that story, I highly, highly recommend it. And I highly recommend uh, subscribing to support good journalism and uh, the sports writing so that we can continue to have this kind of an insight, you know, this kind of a background to know what's going on behind the scenes because it is the reporters that bring these stories to life. Without them, we would never know. We would just be sitting here punching each other back and forth in speculation. So it's good to have that. So let me know what you think about the hiring process, Jim Harbaugh, Kevin O'Connell, and the coaching staff as it is now. Let's hope to God that we keep Keenan McCardell. That's the one name that hasn't been talked about yet. I'm hoping that he stays. So that's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.